Hi everybody, this is Sue Altmeyer, and in our second video we're going to talk about search plans and generating search terms. And this material can be found on page 5 of your legal research workbook. When you uh, start a legal research problem, usually in law school you're given a fact pattern, a written fact pattern. So you have to read your fact pattern and determine what the jurisdiction is, what uh, is the law that you're going to be researching in the United States federal law? Is it state law? Which state is it? Is it the law of another country? So first you determine your jurisdiction. Then the next thing you're going to do is you pull key terms out of your fact pattern that you're going to use as search terms when you search your databases for case law and secondary sources and all that other good stuff. And you're going to determine what your issues are because that's going to help you to write a good search statement and focus in on you know what it is you're really looking for what's the question that you really want to answer with your research alright so identifying key terms when you look at a fact pattern if they give you any terms of art in the fact pattern those could be good key terms for searching what do I mean by terms of art I mean legal terms things like negligence or will or statute of frauds or adverse possession or anything like that. If they if that happens to appear in a fact pattern, you can possibly hone in on that. Legal citations. Sometimes you'll be given right off a case to start with or a statute to start with. So pay attention to that. Other than that, you know, focus in on what are the important facts of the case. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you could do that. From there, you can analyze whether you need possibly to use some broader search terms than the terms that are maybe actually written into that fact pattern. It helps when you read your fact pattern to think of who are the parties, what's the relationship between the parties, the places and things involved, what actions are going on, and what are the potential liabilities and defenses. And as stated in your legal research workbook, it helps to pick out factual search terms using the who, what, when, where, why, type of analysis. Okay, so as far as determining issues, the first step of which is identifying the issues, say in a court case, you're identifying the, the issues being the, the questions pre presented. Sometimes it helps when you um, start writing your issue statement to start with the word weather. You have a word to start with anyway, just write down weather, and a good way to start your issue, whether it's this or whether it's that, whether this is true or that's true. Anyway, so here to make this uh, hopefully make more sense, I'm going to run through a sample problem. This is an indictment. We have Ben Reuter knowingly possessed a controlled substance to wit crack cocaine in an amount exceeding 27 grams in violation of section 2925.11 of the revised code. That's the Ohio revised code, by the way. The amount of cocaine being between 27 and 100 grams, this offense is a first degree felony. So a couple things maybe jump out at you at this point. There's more facts that we're going to get in a minute. We have an Ohio Revised Code section given to us, so that might be uh, something to keep in mind for a search term or possibly a good place to start research. Also, we know that this fact pattern has to do with cocaine, and you might think of a broader search term to search term for that being drugs, perhaps, could be a, a good search term. All right, so let's read on. So here you see in the police report that the police found 4.8 grams of crack cocaine on the defendant's person. They found 22.8 grams of crack cocaine behind some bushes where the defendant was standing around. And this was in a common area of an apartment complex. At the time when the police arrived, no one else was in the area. The police arrived to begin with, I think, because they had a call that this particular individual was acting suspicious and the guy matched the description. Anyway, so the drugs look like they were placed there recently. They weren't covered up with leaves or anything. It didn't look like they had been there a while. It looked like they were just kind of thrown there. Okay, so the defendant admitted that the 4.8 grams found on his person, you know, though, though those, those are mine, he says, but the ones in the bushes, I have no idea where that came from. That does not belong to me. That's some somebody else must have put it there. So the issue here is because one, one additional piece of information that you that might kind of put this together is the fact that somebody's charged with a drug possession offense. The more they have on their person, the greater number of uh, grams they have on their person, 
the more serious the offense is going to be and the greater sentence they can get, which with it being uh, 27 grams, I believe they said that was a, a first degree felony, whereas if it was only 4.8 grams that we could say this person was in possession of only the a small amount on his person, that's a lot less jail time. So the search terms, obviously what might jump out at you, the actions, the action word is possession or the keyword is possession, um, whether this defendant can be found in possession of just the small amount of cocaine on his person, or is can he be in possession of what's underneath the bushes? We said the statute before. We talked about uh, drugs being a possible search term. Common area could be a possible search term. That might be getting a little bit too fact-specific, but it is possible that there is a case dealing you know with those exact facts but maybe not you might leave that off for the time being you know initially when you run your search another term which is not going to come up just from reading that fact pattern is uh, another term is constructive possession this search term you would find out because you you figure okay my case is about drug possession i'm going to go to a secondary source i'm going to read up a little bit about drug possession and when I'm reading my secondary source, aha, there's this term called constructive possession that I think might apply to this situation. You know, constructive possession being when, you know, right, it's not actually on somebody's person, but it's thus somehow in their vicinity or somehow that you can assume that they, in fact, possess the object. And if you want to go with your person, places, things approach, here you have your places being the apartment, uh, common area, things being uh, cocaine or, or drugs, uh, actions, possession, constructive possession, and the cause of action is the, uh, again, drug possession and also the statute. So uh, another good way to uh, analyze this situation to get pull out key search terms is your person, place, thing, actions, liability approach. So from there, I can kind of pull together an issue statement like this once I have these that terminology down. Whether a defendant is in possession of drugs found near his person in a common area of an apartment building. So then what I could do with that issue statement, for one thing anyway, is I can use that as a natural language search in Lexis or Westlaw. See, I just typed it into uh, to Lexis. Uh, I probably want to select my jurisdiction you know, and then run the search and see if I get anything on point doing that as a natural language search. Another thing I could do, well, I could further narrow this search down using terms and connectors, which we're going to talk about in a bit, or I could, if I really wanted to, I could start with terms and connectors right off the bat, maybe run some kind of terms and connectors search like this, possession within sentence, drugs, and common area in quotes. Now that's going to be the next video. The next video that you're going to see is about terms and connector searching. So don't worry if right now this uh, little terms and connector search statement doesn't make too much sense to you because the next video is going to make everything clear.